Hello everybody, welcome to Chaz Draycott Media. It's been a while since I've done one of these and I know you're here simply just for information so I'm not even going to play my intro and we're going to look at iRacing paints today. So, this is the paint file. It is the basic livery that goes on your car in iRacing. You get it as a 2048 by 2048 PSD file. It needs to be saved as a Targa file .tga 32 bit. I'll show you that in a second. As of this, you just get your usual layers. You get a wireframe so you can look at the car and you know where the panels actually are on the car and you can just paint whatever you want. So you can just do something like this on it and it's as simple as that you know let's just do a weird green thing all over it and i would literally do control save as down to target file and then you use your iRacing id so it's car underscore minus 172698 save it as that make sure it's 32 bits and boom there it is on your car there is another way that you can save these liveries as well you can save them as a car underscore num file so what that does is is overwrite the standard iRacing stamped numbers and other stickers like the numbers on the Kia Optima here so if I do another livery that's maybe got black stripes all over it and then I save this as car underscore num and then my iRacing ID if you tick this option in the iRacing sim it will remove any originally stamped numbers by iRacing like I've said. This is often more used in the NASCAR and oval racing side of things where there aren't number boards like this but if you see look I've saved it now it's a different livery but the number isn't there. Often people will put their own numbers on the side of the car and that's why they try and do this. Do be careful with that though because if you race in multiple series or whatever and they have it as car underscore and then your name rather than car underscore num it will always prioritize the num liveries over the non num ones if you have that option ticked and it's very easy to forget about it. Let's move on to spec maps, shall we? Now, spec maps add a certain type of finish to your car. As you can see here, it is literally just glossy at the moment, and there's no fancy metallics or anything matte or satin on it iRacing as default has a little green folder in their PSD files up here but they really overcomplicate it with alpha layers and all sorts of stuff. You can simply just paint on the finish that you want on your car. What I tend to do is make another folder up here, just call it spec map. I'll make a duplicate of all of the layers that are involved in the livery. So I'll duplicate the base, just maybe call it spec base and then you change the colour based on here. So, I'll give you some examples of how to get certain finishes. You always want 12 in blue. If you do this, which is barely black, that is just pure gloss. That is just as shiny as it will get. If you add some red into the mix, maybe 100, then it'll start to get a little bit metallic in places. And if you want any matte adding into the finish, you add green in. I'd never recommend, though, going over 150 on the matte, because sometimes if you go to all the way to 255, you get this weird chalkboard effect. It's like that Vanta black that doesn't reflect any light, and it just looks a little bit silly, in my opinion. So tend to go for 100 if you want a sort of satin metallic finish. So we'll just cover the car like that, and then you save this as a target file as well. But this, then, is car underscore spec and then your number. This will generate a .mip file, which is the actual information that iRacing gets the finish of the car from, the sort of different sectors of what's metallic, what's matte, what's shiny. But you can only generate a MIP for your own iRacing ID. So if you are working on a spec map for a car, you need to do it with your own ID. You can then change the number and apply that spec map of the MIP file to somebody else's car. I hope that makes sense. So we save this as a car.spec. These are 24 bits per pixel, not 32. You've got to remember that as well. And as you can see, we've got this sort of matte satin finish on the car. Now, there's a slight bit of metallic in there, but I'll show you just how quickly and easily you can change that. If we go back here and put maybe 255, let's go full metallic, add a little bit less matte in there and go for 50. We'll just do a big stripe down the middle like that. Quick, Control and Alt and S, save as, car on, oh, sugar. There was always going to be an outtake in this video at some point, wasn't there? Let's face it. And boom, you can see it goes from the matte finish that we had there to this sort of metallic bit in the middle. And it's as easy as that. You can literally just paint it on. Now, what I tend to do is I duplicate the parts layers or any sort of car mandatory stuff. And the best thing you can do here is just choose what finish you want every layer. If you lock the pixels up here by clicking this, I don't know if there's a similar button on other forms of software, you could just make those particular bits glossy. So it means that any sort of mandatory bits on the car are not fettled with and messed with. It's just adding little layers to it makes all the difference. So you could have a base of your livery that is just a completely matte finish, let's say, or maybe go for a satin like a green like this. Let me just go into a little bit more detail here. So we'll add some little designs onto the side of the car. I'm going to do them in white. So we're just going to put some little spiky bits up the side of the car. It's not going to be particularly pretty. Beautiful. And by that, I mean not beautiful at all. But then you can duplicate that particular layer, drag it up into the spec map, and then 
you can lock the pixels here and paint that a completely different finish to the rest of the car. So we've got a satin finish. Let's go for a slightly satiny metallic finish there, shall we? We'll save that. And there you see, you can have those lightning bolts down the side in that metallic finish. What I didn't do there, though, is save the livery underneath. You'll notice it's still blue and black. Turn the spec map off. Save the livery. Car underscore num. Save that as 32 bits per pixel. And there you go. Blue with a nice silvery stripe down the side. If you want that brushed aluminium effect, by the way, it's 255 on the red, between 50 and 100 on the green, and then 12 in the blue. And you get this lovely, lovely metallic finish. Let's move on to decal layers, though. So if you see here, there's a few stickers and stuff on the car that are the sort of mandatory stickers of the championship it was in. They used to be called Contigs on the iRacing PSDs. This is an old PSD, by the way. They're now just called Car Decal. You can just turn them off, and to be fair, you can just save the livery as it is, and you don't have to have them on the car. iRacing gives you a lot of options with that in the modern day. You can see they're all now gone. What decal layers do, though, is form a sort of transparent layer over the top with just a few decals and number boards and maybe windscreen banners, you know, like championship sponsors. These can be easily enforced by a championship that you're racing in or a league or a series, whatever you want to call it. Sometimes they will add it as just a file themselves. I have some decal layers available in here. Let me just find one. Here's a decal layer that I did for the SRM GT3 Winter Tour recently. You'll see that you have the usual base and everything of the car underneath it like that, but it just appears as this. It's only covering a few tiny segments of the car. Now, you have to save these in a certain way. Sometimes I have to use paint.net to make sure they're transparent. Otherwise, they have either a white or a black background, and you just overwrite people's liveries completely. Sometimes the series will ask you to apply their decal layer to the car yourself. And obviously, if that's the case, then you don't need to do a decal layer file. You could just add it into your paint and save it as is. From a league organizer's standpoint, though, it can be very easy to enforce decal layers, actually. So long as you have the iRacing IDs of all your series entrants. You can see here it's just a case of copying the file itself and just changing the iRacing ID for each driver. You then put that within the folder for that car, and then you'll have decal layers for everyone there that competes in your championship. You can provide that to a broadcaster, and obviously they will then see all of the liveries as intended on the stream. Do beware, though, that spec maps can affect decal layers from underneath. So if you've got windscreen banners that are a light colour and somebody has metallic number boards or a windscreen banner for some reason, then it will show through not as intended. It will be metallic and you won't maybe see the design very well at all with that being the end result. One of the ways you can avoid this, if you've got good cooperation from your drivers anyway, is to add an outline to a PNG like this and then you can send it to the drivers, they can line it up with their livery, and just check if there's any discrepancies between how it looks on their car or where their spec map lines up, if they've still got access to their painters. I want to move on to one final gripe of mine, though, and that is the colour of people's wheels on iRacing. Now, there's a running joke that I don't like pink wheels, and people in a championship that I run actually started a charity campaign to get everybody to run pink wheels previously. Now, you can have multiple types of finish on... Oh, never mind, not on this car, you can't. Let's go for something a little bit more common here on iRacing, the MX-5. If you look down here at the wheels, you can have different finishes. So you can go for the stock wheels, which are just a sort of dark metallic. And then you've got matte wheels. You've also got chrome, which are very, very shiny, but obviously only in the right colour. You then have brushed, which is like a metallic effect, and then semi-gloss. Now, what people tend to do is they want to go, oh, I want white wheels on my car, and they go like that. To me, that's not realistic. What I tend to do is go for a more grey sort of colour, BC three times is a bit more of a realistic look at it you can also go a little bit darker than that and to be fair the wheels when they're on track still do look like they're actually white it applies to bright colors as well if you want to go for solid magenta wheels i mean that just looks ridiculous if you bring it down a little bit in terms of the saturation sure you get a bit more of a baby pink but they're still bright and you could believe that you could also go the other way down here as well and if you have them just a little bit darker maybe even take some of the saturation away it still gives you those bright magenta wheels but it's a much more realistic look I sincerely hope I haven't missed anything out in this quick look at iRacing's paints today because this wasn't scripted at all. So fingers crossed this all works and if there's any questions just pop them in the comments and I'll happily answer them for you. But yeah, that's a look at the paint files themselves, the spec maps that affect the finish of them and then of course the decal layers that can potentially go over the top and also a quick look at them from a broadcaster and series organiser perspective. Thanks as always very much for watching. Consider becoming a subscriber of Chaz Draycott Media or a member today and hopefully I'll see you in another video very very soon.